And the Oscar goes to everything, everywhere, all at once. There are so many reasons why Everything Everywhere All At Once deserved to win the Oscar for the best picture. But if I was to focus on just one key reason, it would be the universal themes of the film and the creative and meaningful expression of those themes. So what is the main theme of Everything Everywhere All At Once? To me, it's talking about the meaning and the purpose of life. Starting with the extremely broad perspective, which comes from Jobu Tabaki. The meaning of life is seen through the eyes of Jobu Tabaki, Alpha Joy, whose mother, Alpha Evelyn, pushed her beyond her limits and broke her mind, causing her to experience everything, everywhere, all at once, is that there is no meaning to life. And this is embodied within the everything bagel that she creates. By putting literally everything on a bagel, from every single universe, the result is negation. It's a black hole. Everything actually equals nothing. And this analogy can be compared sort of to paints and colors. If you took every color of paint and mix them all together, you lose the vibrancy of each different color. It becomes a really dark and gloomy gloop. And life does sometimes honestly feel meaningless. I have to admit that I've felt that way sometimes, and I'm sure a lot of you have felt that way too. What are we but just a mere speck of dust within the vastness of the universe? What consequences are my minute actions gonna have to affect the grand scheme of things? And the character of Jobu Tabaki has succumbed to this darkness. When you experience absolutely everything, all the highs and the lows wash out. For every miracle, there's a catastrophe. For every positive, there's a negative. You quickly would just become numb to it all. The novelty just wears off. Nothing is fresh, nothing is new. You've seen, you've done, you've experienced absolutely everything. And you're left feeling nothing. And I guess for Jobu Tabaki, the next logical step is just to become nothing. And that is essentially Jobu Tabaki's goal throughout the film, to annihilate herself. But instead of just simply doing it, there's a tiny bit of doubt within her that causes her to seek out another individual, another person who can experience what she's experienced to validate her decision and to validate her nihilistic view that it's just all meaningless. And that's what leads us to Evelyn. Early on in the film, we see that Evelyn just isn't a very happy person. She's stressed, she's anxious, she's constantly moving about and stubborn and unwilling to accept any help. As if her urgency in completing simple tasks somehow makes them more purposeful and important. In her interactions with Waymond and Joy, she can't help but pick fights with them and to throw jabs and shade at them. Waymond even knowing to get out of her way. Later in the film, we get an insight into why she is the way that she is. When she decided to marry Waymond, her father, Gong Gong, disapproved. And when they both moved to America, he didn't root for their success. Instead, he emotionally disowned her. Evelyn felt abandoned by her parents and to some extent felt that she had failed and disappointed them. And that led to a lot of unprocessed guilt and anger, which she later took out on Waymond, blaming him for her life being a quote unquote failure. And then inflicting the same disparaging judgment onto Joy that her father did to her. And this is epitomized in the scene where she tells Gong Gong that Becky is just a good friend of Joy's rather than her girlfriend. And as Becky and Joy go to leave, Evelyn runs out after them into the car park. One moment, please, please. Joy, wait, please. I have something to say to you. What? You, you have to try and eat healthier. You are getting fat. You think for a second that Evelyn is going to apologize, and I'm sure deep down that's what Evelyn wanted to do. But instead, because of her experience with her father, never being supportive of her, she's the exact same with Joy, instead being critical of her. Evelyn was constantly told that what she did, who she was with, and who she was, wasn't enough. That she didn't reach her full potential, that she didn't achieve anything. So to her, the meaning of life was to attain some form of success. And this is reaffirmed by her desire and draw to the universe in which she never married Waymond and she was a famous actress. So she projects this on her daughter, never letting her feel like she's good enough, constantly pushing and wanting her to do more, to be better and to achieve greatness, whatever that is. And when Evelyn is finally exposed to the vastness of experiencing everything everywhere all at once, she initially understands where Jobu Dubaki is coming from. That if everything exists, nothing matters. And begins to fall into the horror of that reality, seeing it as some form of escape from the dissatisfaction with her own life. 
but ultimately she ends up rejecting that view. And that was a result of realizing what was in front of her the entire time, her endlessly positive and loving husband, Wayman. Now looking at Wayman's perspective, Wayman just isn't concerned with the notion of being successful or achieving greatness. Wayman finds purpose in the everyday and in the love he has for his family and being kind. This is epitomized in the universe where Wayman and Evelyn never got married and Wayman became a successful businessman. Even in this universe, he defends the original Wayman's perspective. He understands the competitive and oppressive nature of the world, but he chooses to fight back in his own way through empathy, hope, and love. And although he's achieved what most people would consider success, he still would have wanted to do taxes and laundry with Evelyn. <laughs> Wayman stays positive in the midst of everything awful. It's his vulnerability and genuine positivity and empathy that stops Deidre, the IRS agent, from seizing the laundromat. And Evelyn realizes how close she had come to being in the same situation as Jobu Tabaki. It was Wayman who had spent all those years keeping her from her own personal black hole, despite her best efforts to put him down. It was Wayman that was always by her side, no matter what success or failure came her way. And he never resented Evelyn. He just continued to love her with all his heart. And the googly third eye is used to represent Evelyn's understanding of all of this. And I guess her enlightenment in the worldview of Waymond. And Evelyn, with this new outlook in life, despite the everythingness, refuses to let Joy go and destroy herself. She recognizes her failures as a mother and begins to truly empathize with Joy as a daughter and accepts her for who she is, just as she wished her father did for her. Although able to be everywhere, she chooses to be with her family, doing their taxes and running the laundromat. Ultimately, finding meaning and purpose in the everyday, ordinary human existence and family. This film was so absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad it won seven Oscars. It's truly well deserved. As a child of immigrant parents, the setting and the characters were just so relatable. I, I really could see myself, my brother and my parents within those characters. And to see people like myself being represented and recognized at the biggest stage is just so amazing. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.